Hey everybody, Haley here. I am doing a video today. I know it's not my regularly scheduled Saturday at 3 p.m., but I had a few questions on some of my old videos that I figured that I would address in a video because a lot of the questions seem to be repetitive, so I'm thinking that it's something that you guys are obviously interested in. So I'll be talking about that, answering those questions in this video. And then also I ordered a package from UCLA of like UCLA stuff, shirts, swag, whatever you want to call it. So I figured I'd open that as well just because it's pretty fun. So just to get right into the questions, these were taken from my videos as I just explained. And this first question is coming from Linda Maldonado. And she said, I'm planning to apply this fall and hopefully I'll get in. I might have missed this, but did you say you applied with a 3.7 GPA? And also, did you have any extracurricular things to put on your app? And my last question is, what do you personally think stood out to the UCs and allowed you to be accepted everywhere? Sorry for all the questions, just so anxious about applying and love to hear people's feedback. Um, first of all, I just wanna say, please don't ever apologize for asking questions. I think that is one of the great things about the internet is you can connect with people who have the answers and the insight to things that you may be wondering and you don't necessarily have to be on your journey alone. So I am so happy and open to answering all your guys' questions. Now, just to jump right into it, Yes, my GPA at the time of my application was, I believe, like a 3.73, which is pretty high. It's pretty high. Um, still, I was very surprised to be accepted at Berkeley and UCLA because those are pretty competitive schools, and a 3.7 is probably not the highest GPA that they accepted at the school. But yeah, 3.7 was my GPA when I applied for the fall 2018 term. Um, as far as extracurricular go, extracurriculars go, I did not do any extracurricular programs in community college other than the honors program, which isn't really an extracurricular program. They just kind of give you more challenging classes. Um, and I didn't do any extracurricular activities in community college because I worked full time and I've worked full time since I was 16 years old. Um, and when it came down to funding my education, it was all on my shoulders, so I really had to make sure that I had the money to get my tuition taken care of, books, you name it, whatever I needed to get through the semester, that is where all my money went, so that is why I worked full time. Um, I did participate in extracurricular activities in high school, and I did include that on my application. I don't really think they even necessarily look at that, but I included it on my application when I was in high school. I was on student council. I was on, I was in this other club called PAC, Presentation Ambassadors Club. So it was just kind of like about recruiting prospective students to come to the school. Um, and then also I was on the Leadership Academy Club. Um, probably a few others. I think I was like the Women in Computer Science Club for like a year. A um, few others that I'm forgetting, but it doesn't really matter on your application. I would say definitely the community college thing is more important. And then the last, to address the last question, what do I think made my application stand out to the UCs? Um, I'm going to say this, and I'm sure you'll hear me say this in so many more videos in the future, but I really do think, aside from having a strong GPA, that my essays were really, really good. And they say that your essays should give context to your application, and I think I managed to do that really well in my essays, and that is what made me so successful in being accepted to all the schools that I applied to. And if you're curious about essays, lost with your essays, have no idea what to do with your essays, fear not, I will be making a video about not only tips for your essays, but I'm also going to be sharing my own essays and I will post those closer to when the application period opens. So look out for those around September 1st. I think September 1st is actually on a Saturday this year. So I will post it on September 1st then. Next question comes from Ariel, Ariel. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, she said, hi Haley, thank you for this video. It was very helpful. How did you deal with missing out on the traditional college experience? This is a really big concern, I think, for a lot of people. Definitely when I made the decision to go to community college, I was very concerned about it because I was like, you know, I'm missing out, I'm not moving away, I'm not really like having the whole becoming an adult and being independent and going out on your own kind of a moment. Um, but I think that honestly, once you get into the groove of community college and you get into the group of school, it really won't matter because you will eventually have that moment when you go to 
when you go off and you transfer. Um, obviously, it's not going to be when you're 18. It's going to be when you're a little bit older. I'm 21. I don't really care. I love my family. I love my friends. I love the Bay Area, which is where I'm from. And to leave it, honestly, is going to be really hard for me. So I'm happy that I got to spend this extra time with my family and with my friends and in my hometown. And, you know, I mean, I, don't, I hope that doesn't sound like super insensitive, but just personally, like, I'm the type of person, I'm just like very logical. I don't really make decisions that are based on emotions. I make them that are based on logic. So once I realized like if I wanted to go to UC like UCLA or UC Berkeley, like I would have to go to community college. I was like, all right, it's fine. Like I don't even care about going off to college as a senior anyway. And a lot of my friends also live in the area. They go to college in the area or they go to the same community college as me. So my best friend, my two best friends, one went to the same community college as me and the other one, one went to to San Francisco State so they weren't really that far from me I got to see them all the time and we work together so I would literally see them like four times a week a question from Maggie she's just asking about the extracurriculars she also said did you have any internships no I did not have any internships once again because I worked um, also I don't know if it's just my community college but there didn't really seem to be that many internship opportunities or they didn't really like advertise internship opportunities so um, if I had known about one, I might have done an internship, um, but I didn't also really figure out that I wanted to be a linguistics major until like my third year of community college, which was my last year of community college. So I don't know how relevant the internship that I would have done would have been to my actual major that I ended up doing. But I think it looks good no matter what you do, whether the internship is related or not. They always are interested in having diversity on your applications as well. So, you know, it can only strengthen your application. It can never hurt your application to do an internship or work or do an extracurricular. Just whatever will make you look good. Angie has a similar question to Ariel. She said, I've been debating with myself whether or not to go to CC first, but I don't know. My heart really wants to go to college straight away. And yeah, once again, I think that this is kind of a struggle that you're going to have within yourself internally until you figure out what you need to do in order to get where you want to go. And I mean, I'm not going to discourage anybody from going to a four-year university straight out of high school. If you want to do that, I think that's amazing. But if you're looking to save money, especially if you don't know what you want to do, um, definitely consider going to community college. I explained it more in my video, which I will put the link down below or somewhere on this video. The video is called, um, is it worth it? The benefits of community college. So definitely check that out if you're kind of on the fence. I love Justin Vernon. OMG, I'm leaning on UCLA currently. Maybe I'll see you on campus. Definitely see you on campus. Um, hopefully, I don't know if you ended up going to UCLA, but if there are any other transfer students who are going to UCLA in the fall, hit me up. Um, let me know because I'm going to UCLA. I'm not going to know a single soul on campus. So it would be kind of nice if there was like a little cohort of people who bonded over YouTube and being a transfer student. Kimia said, did you apply through TAP to Berkeley and UCLA? Um, I did not apply with any like special programs or considerations to Berkeley. So no, I did not apply to Berkeley through TAP. UCLA, so here's the thing. I think I applied to UCLA through TAP. It's kind of a complicated story, but I asked the honors program coordinator about my community college, what the process was like in the beginning of the application period. And she's like, oh, like, don't worry about it. Like, I'll take care of it automatically for you. Like later, we can have a meeting later, like in January or something. And I was like, cool. So I didn't even like, I just pushed it aside, submitted my application in November, like whatever, forgot about it. Like I literally forgot about it. And then in like March, I was like, um, I don't think I ever got approved or certified like for the honors program through TAP. And TAP, I believe is, you know what? I can't even remember, let me tell you. <laughs> Transfer Alliance Program, that's what I thought it was. So Transfer Alliance Program gives you the opportunity to enhance your ability to transfer to UCLA at the junior level from a California Community College. Students are certified after completing the Honors Scholars Program through their community college and given priority consideration for admission to UCLA. So um, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I did complete the Honors Program. I believe you need to take nine courses to be considered TAP certified. Um, so I did take those nine courses. Whether I was actually certified is kind of questionable, um, but 
you know what? I don't really know if it mattered. I got into UCLA anyway. And then I'd also like to add that I did apply to UC Davis under a tag, which is the transfer admission guarantee. Um, I'm gonna do a whole video on this. If I explained it, we would be here for like 20, 30 more minutes. So I'll leave that for the other video. If you don't know what it is, please look it up, especially if you're a California community college student and you wanna to transfer to UC, like this is an amazing thing. Like basically you get to choose the school that you want and say like, I, I wanna go here, these are the classes I'm taking. And if your tag gets approved, um, you're guaranteed acceptance into that school. The schools that don't participate in that program would be Berkeley, San Diego, and uh, UCLA, but the other schools do as far as I'm concerned. And not UCSF, UC San Francisco, because it's actually only a graduate school. They don't accept any undergraduate students. So all the other schools participate in that. Oh, and not San Diego. So Berkeley, UCLA, and San Diego, did I just say that? I don't know. They don't participate in the tag, but the other schools do. So if you need a safety school, definitely look into that. UC Davis was my safety school and obviously my tag was approved, so I got in. Next question from Grace Madison. Thank you so much for posting this. It's crazy because I'm actually planning to attend West Valley College next fall and hearing about all your incredible accomplishments as a transfer student is giving me so much motivation for the future. And I agree with you, everyone had, I agree with everything you had to say about the housing market in the Bay. It's absurdly expensive here. I wish you the best of luck at UCLA. Thank you so much, Grace. Um, good luck at West Valley. Let me know if you have any questions. It's an interesting school. Um, definitely, definitely helped me get where I wanna go. So I have nothing but good things to say about West Valley right now. <laughs> And then I have one other question from Carla Solis. I'm going to UCLA this fall with Spanish as my major. Congrats on your acceptance. Go Bruins. Awesome, Carla. Congratulations. Once again, I'm sure I'll see you there this fall. Let me know. I'm assuming you're a transfer student, so um, congratulations again. And yeah, go Bruins. All right, now moving on to the unboxing portion of this video. I feel like a makeup artist, like makeup guru, YouTuber, how they're always getting like their boxy charms and they're unboxing it. Um, I wish I was that cool and I got free stuff. But no, I paid like $120 for this. But there was a sale, so it's totally justified. And I actually got a shirt that I've really, really been wanting and I've been eyeing since I went to the new student, um, what is it called? Admitted Students Day, Bruin Day, Bruin Day. So, I already um, cut the box open because if I didn't do it beforehand, I was going to be struggling to open it on camera and that would have been so embarrassing. So, just to pull out the first thing, I got this water bottle, pretty cool. Don't know if you can see it. It says UCLA established 1919 Bruins, super cute. I really needed a water bottle because the water bottle that I use on a daily basis is a Berkeley water bottle. So I don't think I can take that to UCLA. Then I got these shorts. They're like little pajama shorts. I also saw these at the Bruin day, but I didn't buy them because they didn't have my size. But then when I ordered them, I couldn't remember what size I wanted. These look a little big, but it'll be fun because I'm sleeping in them anyway, so they'll be cozy. I got this shirt. Hopefully you guys can see it. It's just like a little tank. I'm going to wear it to the gym. It says UCLA Bruins, and it, it's cool. It has like this puffy like writing on it. I don't think you can really tell on camera, but it's like... Um, Puffy. I don't know how to describe it. It's like raised from the material of the shirt. I got this and I'm so excited to use this. This sounds so ridiculously nerdy, but it's for your student ID card. And I know that I'm going to be one of those people who uses this all the time because I'm going to be going like to the cafeteria all the time. That's so embarrassing. But I have like IDs at my work. You have to badge in pretty much to go anywhere. And I'm the only person, like I'm one of the only people who wears the necklace ID. Like everyone else has it on their pants, which is a little bit more discreet. But I always have it out because I need access 24 seven to everything. I got this shirt because I really wanted the sweatshirt version of it, but it was sold out in my size. So I was like, all right, the shirt's on sale. It's cute, I'll just get it anyway. And it's actually a men's shirt, but it's super cute. Just says UCLA. I really like this color of blue. I think it looks good on me. So <laughs> cute. It's 
size small looks a little bit, but it's fine. Okay, and then this is the shirt that I've literally been eyeing since I went to Bruin Day in May, and it's almost July. I'm obsessed with this shirt. This is like the moment of truth. Oh my god, it's huge. It's like literally giant. Okay, so it has the little UCLA with the Joe Bruin icon on the front. And then across the back, it says UCLA Bruins, but it's giant. What the hell? What size is this? It's a medium. Okay, um, I feel like this is tagged wrong. I'll definitely be exchanging this for like even an extra small because it's giant. Good thing I am going to UCLA in the beginning of August for my new student orientation session. If any of you guys are going to session 203, let me know. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this little bonus video. Um, I will get back to my regularly scheduled programming on this Saturday. And the video that I'm going to be doing this Saturday is going to be my top tips for being successful and thriving in community college. So if you are an incoming community college student, check that out. I think there's a lot of valuable insight that I haven't been able to find anyone else who's saying this stuff. It's stuff that I wish I had known when I was entering community college and all throughout my community college career. Um, so check that out. It's going to be really good. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed my video. Subscribe to check out my other videos and to see the videos that I have coming in the future. Leave a comment if you have any questions, comments. If you're a transfer student who's going to UCLA in the fall, let me know. I'd love to link up. And thank you so much for watching. Have a good one, guys. Bye.